<laughs> Hello, my fellow Midnight Warriors. I'm Concha, a voider of the light, reveler of the dark, queen of the night. <laughs> Excuse me, I had some live chicken earlier. Oh, do you like my nails? I color them red just for you, little piggies. Red is one of my favorite colors, the color of blood, anger, and broken hearts. And today is a special day for all the broken hearts out there. Happy Valentine's Day, you little perverts. Eyes up here. Since today is such a special day for all the red hot lovers out there, today's episode will feature stories of love and relationships. And if you're up at this hour, you must be sad and alone, but don't worry. Mama will take care of you. For love is not all it's cracked up to be. Take, for example, our first story about a little whore named Abigail who loved maybe just a little too much. So much so that she may have suffered a bit of a psychotic episode. While you filthy sows watch this unfold, I'm going to try to find a little love of my own. So turn off the lights and enjoy the journey into little Abigail's mind, the man in my room. February 13th, 2016. I know it's been a while since I've written in my diary, but God, I miss Daniel so much. I wish things never went so sour and that he was here with me. Where did it go wrong? Six months of pure bliss, <laughs> followed by distance and coldness. Why is he being this way? He hasn't returned any of my phone calls or texts in days. Maybe it's because I got too drunk last Tuesday and he had to take care of me. I made a fool of myself. Or maybe I'm overthinking it. I need to stop overthinking everything. It only complicates and cripples me. I've been drinking a lot more lately. Something is happening to me. I don't feel like myself anymore. I'm in so much pain, physical and emotional. And I've been throwing up a lot more. Something is happening to me. I don't feel like myself anymore. Everything has become blurry. The day I left his house last, it was fine. He kissed me goodbye and smiled warmly. I felt genuine. I still felt on cloud nine leaving his place. I do remember I started feeling anxious and uneasy when I crossed by that empty lot by his house. I looked at the lone street light and it sent chills down my spine. I was frozen and frightened. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. That was the night the nightmare started. I'm walking home from Daniel's house and I look to the left near the vacant lot about a block away from his place. There's a man standing under a lone street light that caught my attention the night I left. It's unsettling because he's looking right at me almost as if he's seen through. He starts walking towards me and I start to walk faster away. I look back and he's gone as I walk through the dark back streets. I'm almost home, but I can still feel him behind me. He 
he's not there, but I know he's there. You know, dream logic. Since I've had these dreams, Daniel has ceased to answer my calls and texts. And my body has been feeling as if it's rejecting my soul. Somebody please help me, because I'm starting to unwind. I went out and bought a death, Virgin Mary, and Holy Bird candle. And if I close my eyes and think about him long enough, he will be beckoned back to me. Daniel, where have you been? thinking Abigail you're so ugly you're so stupid you think Daniel wants you <laughs> he wants me he doesn't love you Help me because I'm starting to Somebody please help me because I'm starting to unwind.
didn't mean to kill him, but the hunger was too strong. Um, I have no idea what just happened. But I guess it's true what they say. Love kills. I thought Daniel looked the cutest when he was haunting little Abigail. Hmm. I hope I can find true love like that someday. Oh, so I finally made my little dating profile. What do you little piggies think? I think it perfectly represents me and all of my dark urges. Hopefully someone will come along for the ride. Looks like I caught a little fly in my web of deceits. If he doesn't ghost me and all goes well, he'll be in for a good time. Perhaps we can meet him a little later, if I can get him to come my way. Our next story is about a little chunker who is finally ready to move on with life after a breakup and decides to take his chances with a stranger with dire consequences. <laughs> Sounds fun. So settle in and get ready for hell dates. Hey, bitch. What's up? What are you doing? Working out. That's weird. You never work out. Shut up. You want to go out tonight? Where are you going? They just opened a new gay bar downtown called Woodpeckers. Come. Sounds like something Steve would go to. You can't avoid him forever. You guys broke up like four months ago. I'm not avoiding him. I'm moved on. I'm actually going on a date tonight. With who? Jim Stud 457. Whore! You call that a date? I call that a hookup, you lonely mess. I'm not hooking up. This is a date night. And it's something I really owe myself. And uh, I feel like I deserve it tonight. But what does his profile say? I didn't really look at the profile. I just kind of swipe through all the pictures. How tall is he? Like six foot. What's he into? He's like mysterious. I don't know. He's kind of quiet. He's not like Steve at all. Steve would just put it all out there. I guess that makes sense. Where are you guys meeting? His house. Bad girl. Stop it! He's really nice and really hot, and he invited me over to his house for some Netflix and chill. Netflix and chill means sex. You're going to have sex. Well then, if I do, I do. That's up to me, isn't it? Are you eating? Shut up! Is there mayo on that sandwich? I hate you. Fine. Flake on me for sex. Just be careful. Those apps are full of creepers. For all you know, this guy could be like a serial killer that preys on chunky slots. Not chunky. You're one to talk. You met your boyfriend on an app and you guys are great. That's totally different. We met on Instagram and we had a lot of mutual friends and we met in public. Not at his house after two hours of texting. Look, I don't have time to get into this with you. I have to go get ready for my date. My non-hookup date. Whatever makes you feel better about it. Take a little knife with you just in case. I don't think you need to take a knife. I don't think it's that serious of a situation. Keep telling yourself that. If you're so convinced about it being a bad idea, then why don't you just give me a call at midnight if I haven't called or texted you already. But I'm gonna be at the club! Seriously? You gave me all that crap and you're gonna leave me with a stranger anyway? Fine, I'll call you then. Bye, slant. Bye to you too. I'm nervous, but it's okay. I deserve this. Cute, not fat.
Jesus, it's cold out here. Well, are you gonna let me in? It's a nice place. What's with the dead baby? So, do you want a drink? Yeah, definitely. Had a couple shots before I got here, actually. Thank God. Is it okay if I, if I watch you make my drink, though? I'm really picky. Dead plants. Okay. You know, my friend thought this was going to be a really bad idea. Like you might be a serial killer or something. Maybe I am. Kidding. I have a dry sense of humor. I can see that. Alright. Do a little turn for me. Okay. You're a little plumper than I thought. You're a little creepier than I thought. You know what? I'm gonna get going. No. Stay. You know, I'm not here to hook up, in case that's what you thought. Who said I wanted to hook up? Alright, what is this? You're not talking, you're being weird. You don't want to hook up, you don't even have a TV. You just called me fat, and you have a dead baby in your living room. Television's in there. Yeah, I'm not going in there. I thought you wanted a Netflix and chill. Not in that red ass room. Why is it that color? <sighs> what is it? Tequila. That ain't tequila. Yes, it is! Well, it tastes like toilet. I'm leaving. You're yelling? Your drink sucks? This whole thing sucks.
Oh. Hey, bitch. How was the date? Hello? Hello? Bitch, did you hang up on me? These bitches just try to eat me. Who try to eat you? What bitch? <laughs> mm, that's my kind of date. Who would have known the little pig would end up being the hero? And it looks like Abigail came back for a little dinner to quench her insatiable urge for flesh. Too bad the pork ended up taking a bite out of her. These are the types of surprises one can only find on Conscious House of Horrors. And now, the moment you have all been waiting for. Welcome Chorizo Boy 666. Hi. Hello, handsome. Um, are you like taping a TV show here or something? Oh. The cameras? Don't mind them. Oh. But tell me, do you like blood? Do I like blood? Um, you see, I thought you were going to be a freak, but <laughs> not a freak. But I, I guess I like blood, yeah. I mean, we all need blood to live, so I got to like blood. <laughs> so true. Yeah, so can I have a seat or something? I don't see a chair. No. Whoa. Kneel for me. Kneel. For, um. Yes, you heard me. Kneel. You know what? I think I'm just gonna take off. Oh, no, no, stay, stay. I just made drinks. Here, oh. have one. It's oh. just for you. Really? Thank you. Uh, what, what is this? Just a little something that I whipped up. Oh. If you drink it, you'll get a Valentine's Day kiss. Valentine's Day kiss, huh? Yep. Well, I guess I can have a sip. <laughs> Do you like it? It's uh, it's all right. Um, a little strong, but um, <laughs> I'm kind of feeling a little uh, uh weird yes. now. Yeah. Yes. Um. Uh, it seems like you enjoyed it. Yeah, it did. Uh. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Looks like I caught a fly in my web. I'm gonna have a great time today. <laughs> I guess you could call me a necromantic. <laughs> Till next time, piggies. <laughs>